Hi, this is the last step in a five-part series for people who are new to Postman. Welcome, and hold on to your seats because in this video, we're gonna pull it all together and chain our requests in Postman. So what does it mean when we say chaining requests? We're talking about extracting data from one response and then using that data in a different request. Anyone guess how we can do that? With variables, storing a value and accessing it later is something that most developers are familiar with. In this video, we'll use environment variables, but you could also use global or collection variables to do the same thing. For this example, we'll revisit the two requests that we set up earlier and save to a single Postman collection. The first one uses the Google Maps geocoding API to geocode a street address into geographic coordinates. The second one uses the Twitter API, takes in your screen name, and returns your user ID and other user info. Right now, I'm kind of hungry. I'd like to find a good sushi place near me and send myself a recommendation. To do that, I'm going to add a couple more requests to my collection. I know the Google Places API can look up restaurants in a certain vicinity. It just requires a latitude and longitude. And I know the Twitter API can send direct messages. I just need my Twitter user ID. As you might have guessed, this will be our workflow. We're going to pick up the pace a tiny little bit, but if you make it to the end and really understand what's going on, you'll have so much power to do so much more in Postman. With great power comes great responsibility. All right, for this series, I'm using the Postman standalone app for Mac OS X. I'm on version six. Make sure you have a Postman account and you're logged in. Let's get started. So with our first request, we geocoded a street address to geographic coordinates. Our next request will require latitude and longitude. How do we save these response values to an environment variable so that we can use it in the next request? Remember, the JavaScript that you write under the test tab will execute after the main request is sent. We've already learned about Postman's good old pm.star API and saw how to handle a response using pm.response. So for this request, we know that the response is JSON. We'll tell Postman to treat it like JSON with the .json method. When you're parsing a deeply nested response, sometimes it's easier to use a side-by-side -side view. You can use this icon in the bottom bar here, and if you click on the side, you can collapse some sections. I've saved this response as a local variable just so it's a little bit easier to read. Uh, and when I say local variable, I just mean I'm declaring it here and using it here within the scope of this scripting tab. All right, we told Postman to treat his response as JSON, so now we can drill down into the array and parse the first object to extract a latitude and longitude. So we have the latitude and longitude saved to a local variable, and now we can set an environment variable so that we can use it outside the scope of this tab using pm.environment.set. The first parameter is a string that represents the name of the variable, and the second parameter is the value that you want to store. So plug in your local values. All right, hit send. Now when we go to the quick look, we can see that we've set the latitude and longitude as environment variables. This is how you parse a response and set an environment variable so that you can use it in other requests. Okay, on to the next request. We're going to add a request here to call a different Google API. If you go to the Google Places API documentation, take a minute to set up an app, enable the API, and once again, you'll need your API key and the URL for making a nearby search. Back in the Postman app, paste the Google Places endpoint URL into a new request, save it to our collection, and then store your API key as an environment variable. Now when you open the params editor, you can add all your parameters for the request. We've already initialized latitude and longitude as environment variables when we manually sent the previous request. If we hit send, we can see all the sushi restaurants that are near me. From here, we can handle this a few different ways. I'm going to go to the test tab loop through all the results, and if a sushi restaurant is open now and has a rating of at least over four, over four stars, I'm going to save the restaurants to an array I'm calling choices. And then I'm going to save my choices as an environment variable so that I can access it later. Since choices is an array, remember to JSON stringify it to encode it. You can JSON parse it later on to decode it. If we hit send now, we can go to the quick look and see our array of choices stored as an environment variable. Okay, on to the third request. We already built this request to the Twitter API, and we know it requires a Twitter screen name and it will return a user ID. 
Let's write a test to extract the user ID from the response and save it as an environment variable to use in another request. All right, that wasn't so bad. If I hit send now, I can peek in the quick look and see that I've set my Twitter ID as an environment variable. We're almost there. This last request is going to use the Twitter API again to send a direct message to myself. This time we'll use a post request to send a body with the contents of our direct message. From the Twitter documentation, let's get the URL for this endpoint and look up how the body should be formatted. Back to Postman. Since we've already used the Twitter API and set up OAuth1, let's duplicate this other request and then rename it. Paste in the URL from the API documentation. Under headers, remember to add content type is application JSON. And under the body, select raw JSON. And then we can add a request body the way it should be formatted according to the Twitter documentation. In this body, we can still use the double curly braces syntax to access our variables. The data types here should be strings, so make sure to surround these values with quotes to keep the JSON valid. Well, we don't actually have a recommendation yet, but I'd like to use a variable here called recommendation. We have to set it before we can get it. We can either do it as a test script from the previous request, or we can handle it here as a pre-request script. Since we haven't done the um, pre-request script yet, let's just do it here. Just like it sounds, this code will execute before the main request, in this case, before we post the direct message. So remember, we have an array of choices saved as an environment variable. Let's go ahead and access that array in the pre-request script and then randomly choose one of them. Here's a little helper function to make the random selection. You can use a try catch block if you're familiar with that um, syntax to help with error handling. It's totally up to you. To access a variable in either of the script sections, we will use pm.environment.get. Remember, we had to encode this array earlier uh, when we saved it, so now we can decode it using JSON parse. Now we're going to use our helper function to randomly select one of these choices from the array. And if you'd like, we can log some information to the Postman console. This gives us some visibility and helps with debugging. And the last step here is to set our environment variable recommendation so that we can use it to send in the body of this main request. We'll use pm.environment.set. The first parameter is the name of the variable and the second parameter is the value. And that should do it. We've been manually sending all these requests one at a time, but that's really not the way to run a collection. Let's run them all together. Remember how? The collection runner. Let's open the Postman console first with this icon on the bottom left. I want to see our fancy log statements that verifies our sushi restaurant recommendation. To run the collection, click on the chevron next to the collection name to expand the details. Hit the blue run button to open the collection runner in a separate window. Verify the collection and, and, and environment are as you'd like it. And then, drum roll please, hit run. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So you see your request running, test passing, and if we check our console, our direct message has posted. This is where I'm going for lunch. Yum. And that's it. We covered a lot of stuff in this video. We chained together requests by extracting data from one request and passing it through to another request. We talked about setting and getting environment variables and saw how that's handled differently in the text areas versus the scripting areas. We did all that and more. If you're doing cool stuff in Postman, let us know in the comments below. And if you like this series, check out some of our others. Mm -hmm.